So we surveyed a couple of dozen of them all across New South Wales and found that they largely aligned to the cardinal points, particularly north-south and east-west. And this could be explained by a number of different things, but um, in particular it seems that they were probably oriented um, using positions of astronomical objects like the sun. So if you measure the position of the sun at different times of the day, you can you can work out the direction of east and west, and then from that you can work out the position of north and south. Alternatively, you can use um, stars to mark out um, the directions as well. So we don't know for certain if that's how these um, orientations were were developed or known, but they certainly seem to be the best best way of doing that. Were the uh, results surprising to you at all? Well, we didn't really know. We'd heard a lot in the archaeological community for many years that a lot of stone arrangements tended to be aligned to the cardinal points, but ours was the first in-depth study to really check this out in detail and to show using actual data and actual measurements that this was the case. What does it say about Indigenous Australians that constructed these sites? Well, it's very clear that, that Aboriginal people had a very good understanding of direction. I mean, nobody who knows anything about Indigenous culture would be surprised by that statement. <clears throat> they have very, very good spatial skills and were able to navigate their ways long distances, day or night, without the aid of any sort of compass or GPS or anything like that. They could just use landmarks in the sky to figure out how to get from point A to point B very accurately. So that wasn't really a surprise, but it does tell us you know, a, a bit about how Aboriginal people understood concepts like cardinal directions. Um, if you look here and you take a compass and go outside from Australia, say New South Wales, for example, um, true north and magnetic north, what the compass actually reads, is going to be different by 10 to 13 degrees. So it's quite interesting that these orientations seem to be reasonably, you know, that they were fairly accurate just by being able to use natural phenomena, which you know, again, that isn't surprising for those of us in the field, but I think to a lot of people who don't know much about indigenous culture, people don't tend to realize how in-depth their intellectual capabilities were. They really were incredibly intelligent and able to deduce these sorts of things very well. So it's just it's one aspect of a growing body of research we're doing, um, also trying to understand the astronomical knowledge and traditions of Aboriginal people. So by showing that a lot of these sites had you know, preferences to cardinal directions, and, you know, the best ways of doing that are by using the sun or stars, you know, it helps us understand, um, helps us build on that knowledge of uh, understanding how Aboriginal people use the night sky. And how does this tie in with your previous uh, work on Aboriginal rock art? Well, stone arrangements are a type of rock art, and rock art is prominent in areas where you have stone arrangements as well. <clears throat> Most of them are you know, used for ceremony. So you would have dendroglyphs, which are carvings in trees. You would have rock art, uh, you know, carvings in the rock, maybe paintings, and these these sorts of ceremonial sites that include stone arrangements. You know, we usually all, all all together. They they weren't sort of separate entities. So for that, we've been trying to understand the astronomical symbolism and rock art itself. So stone arrangements as a form of rock art. You know, this helps us understand astronomy and, and rock art in that context, you know, in addition to engravings and paintings and things like that as well.